best music pro FM. Now, this video might not be for everybody, but if you were into Top 40 Radio, you know, back in the 70s, when all of those big AM stations were jumping over to FM, you might enjoy this one. Hi, I'm AC Programming Consultant Gary Berkowitz, and today, think about this. How many radio stations are celebrating their 47th anniversary? They're in the same format. Uh, they basically have the same positioning statement. They're even in the same building that they began in. Well, one of those radio stations, uh, which is very, very special to me, is 92 Pro FM in Providence, Rhode Island. Back on April 29th, 1974, I was the first program director as we kicked off 92 Pro FM. Although when we kicked it off, it was uh, FM 92, and then it became uh, P uh, PRO FM, and then it became WPRO FM. A million reasons for all of that, uh, but we finally uh, landed on 92 Pro FM where it's been. Uh, but it's, it's an amazing radio station, truly, when you say iconic. Pro FM is an iconic radio station. So I thought it would be a great idea to get the original air staff together uh, to talk about what it was like back when we first put the station on the air and find out out, of course, where they are today. Uh, all of the guys are still around, uh, with the exception of uh, the boogeyman, and we'll have a special little tribute to him as well. So sit back, enjoy the story of 92 Pro FM. We've got a lot of great air checks, a lot of great pictures from back in the day, and, uh, and let's go back to April 29th, 1974, in Providence, Rhode Island. <laughs> WPRO-FM Providence is Stereo Pro-FM. Pro-FM, your money a music station. Just about 11 o'clock Thursday morning. I'm Gary Berkowitz. Hello. Music Good morning. How are you? 11.06 with Chuck Bennett. And there she is, a surfer girl standing by the shore. And boy, with her measurements, I guarantee you one thing. If she goes ever in the water, she won't sink. Pro-FM, the best music. I have some queen. You guys want to tune up? That's all right. Go ahead. Hey. And your chance to win in the album stash coming up in minutes. With the phrase it pays, Pro FM plays the best music. Use it soon to score again. A little before 4.30, Boogie Man, and from Queen, it's late. The best music, P-R-O-F-M. FM 92, WPROFM on a super hit weekend. Congratulating Bill Ryan of Warren and Quirk Jr. High. He just won the Ace 5 side album for knowing the phrase it pays. The music sounds best on Stereo FM, WPRO FM 703, Big John Vita with my telephone number. It is going like crazy. If you'd like to dial in, be glad to try to get on your favorite song. Area code 401-224-1234. Aerosmith. Music FM 92, PRO FM. Well, it looks like we're going to get it again. They say possibly three to five inches of that white stuff. In case it does happen, be here tomorrow morning at 6 o'clock with Chuck Bennett and the FM 92 Storm Center. We'll give you all the cancellations and all the road conditions and all the blah. I like dreaming. FM is FM Providence. So here we are coming up on the 47th anniversary of 92 Pro FM in Providence. And as I said, just before we started recording this call, I wanted a minute to kind of soak this in because today the original air staff, uh, minus just one of us, uh, is, is on this call. So... Let me go around and introduce everybody. Um, the first voice uh, that was ever heard on uh, what was then WPRO FM was Jack, was known then as Bruce right. Diamond, and today he is Jack Diamond. So welcome, Jack Diamond. Thank you. Thank you. Nice to see everybody. Hey, Gio. Hey, Mike. Hey, guys. Hey, Bill. So here's the first question. How did you get to Pro FM? I did the uh, Radio Odyssey like everyone else, and of course, continue to do it uh, after Pro FM. If we had only known then, like Geo, who's still there all these years later, we may have stayed. Um, 
you know, I worked for local stations here in the Washington area and decided I wanted to go somewhere else to do something else. It had all been about Washington, Baltimore. So uh, Jay Clark was nice enough to bring me up to work on WPRO AM to replace you after you decided, I guess, to take the PD gig at uh, Pro FM. So I replaced you at Pro AM uh, before coming downstairs. So it wasn't far to go at Pro FM. So I'm trying to think then if, if I had already gone down, who was doing afternoon drive? At- yeah, I think you guys have that a little backwards. I think when it started, Jack, you started on Pro FM. Gary, you were still doing nights on Pro AM and FM. And you know then what? you went to AM after starting on FM. I think so. I think that's that. Gary that's- left permanently. I think so. But I think so. But I always remember. Jack, you hitting that, and we still to this day we joke about it. You know the fifty thousand watt rock of the Capitol. You know, <laughs> I'd like to say thanks for being the sacrificial lamb who took that radio station from beautiful music at two fifty nine p.m. to three o'clock playing "Jet" by Paul McCartney and having yeah. every single blue hair in Providence, Newport, uh, Pawtucket, everywhere call and go, "What the hell have you done to my radio station?" Yeah, right. uh, where are you today? And currently working for uh, Manning Media, a great local owner that, Gary, you can sold our station. Um, it's called The Eagle, 106.9 The Eagle, classic hits station. Wow, that's great. That is great. Well, I'm glad uh, you're with us on uh, on this call today. Mike Thank Osborne. You. Mike, I remember you were now, now you know, the, you know, some of the memories, you know, mm-hmm. but you, I, I rem- you were on WICE at the yeah. time. Right. Exactly. So how did you how did how did we you and I hook up? And somewhere along the line, I knocked on Jay Clark's number door. I don't remember, but I did. And it was probably maybe a couple of years ago before I ever heard from him. And that was in May of uh, 1974. He called me and asked me if I was interested. And I said, yeah. And he said, well, you need to talk to Gary Berkowitz. And if you can come in and see Gary. So Jay was the one who made the call to me. I came in and saw you, I think, on Monday, May, June, May 6th. Was there for four years. I was back at ROR in Boston at 105.7. I've done two ROrs. That, I remember that. Right. Time. right oh, yeah. That, and that was you again, 105.7. <laughs> and then I went to ODS in Boston for 12 years. Chuck Bennett. I remember After that. opening up the package from you. And I remember saying, uh, Gio, I might have said it to you. I'm not, I'm not sure who I said it to, but it was like, oh, my God, this guy wants to work for us. He's really great. What are we going to, what's the deal? So probably our first, um, I want to say first real midday guy for real. Oh yeah, that was yeah, Chuck. That was Chuck yep. Bennett. So yep. welcome. Class Bennett. to the building, Chuck. So, so, class to the building. <laughs> yep. So before you came to Pro FM, Chuck. No you, offense, Jack. You were already the class, but. Bring, bring us up to date. Where were you? Oh my goodness. I'm trying to remember. Um, I think I, I was, uh, had been at MYQ in Miami and I, I was doing mornings there uh, for a while. And then, um, I'm going to start there, of course. And then when I uh, I left there and I came back, I I, I was out of, out of radio at the, that point, and I lived in Massachusetts. That was my home. And so when I uh, when I was here, I started uh, t- tuning up and down the dial, and I heard Pro FM, which it wasn't Pro FM at the time. But uh, so I said, hey, I like them. And um, so I shot off a tape, and I think I remember go- driving down, and I think I called you or something and you said yeah sure come on in so i went in and you said uh, okay uh would like you to work here and i was doing middays and so now i'm just uh, doing what i need to do and sitting here in covid and watching i love lucy reruns john big john bina john um you know you and, and giovanni who we're gonna go to next uh, probably have one thing in common in that both of you guys were in the building already um, when Pro FM uh, began uh, because we were all working together on WPRO AM Pro 63. There you go. And, Love it, Jim. But John, yeah. you and I, you and I probably go back maybe right. the furthest of this whole group because we met when you and I were both attending Emerson up in Boston. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. You were the PG yeah. at WECB. Yeah. Uh, I came in as a freshman, and you beat the living hell out of me. And here I am today. <laughs> and here uh, but <laughs> but uh, and uh, ERS, uh, that whole Emerson experience was just a great spirit experience. And you graduated and went to Pro AM. I went to SAR. And you brought me over to Providence at Pro AM, right? Right. You were doing week. I think you were do- You started off doing weekends, yeah, and uh, yeah. when I was doing the night show on on Pro AM. 
Um, and then um, we put Pro FM on, and I said, hey, I need my buddy, Big John, to come on down here. So that was it. <laughs> and, and, and John, you know, the one thing I remember about you, um, you know, once, once we migrated you over to 92 Pro FM, uh, was you were, uh, I think we probably had you working like almost every shift on that radio station, didn't we? Yeah, yeah. pretty much. Pretty much. Uh, did I, I came over part-time, right? I think you came over as a part timer, and then I think you went to you might you might have, did you replace Chuck at middays maybe? Um, it, oh, maybe for a little while, for but, a, uh, a little bit, yeah. John did mornings too. Big John for breakfast. That's right. Yeah. We had Big John in the in the yeah. morning, and John um, actually started full time when I went six to ten. He did ten to two. Yeah, that's ten to two. and and a little long fact because I get this question all the time: Where does the big and Big John being a come from? Mighty Mike. He used to one. One night on the air as a line, uh, something like, uh, I don't know, Big John Bina is up next. He was Little John Bina in Fall River last night, but we don't talk about that. That was his exact <laughs> answer, like, right? That's right. That's right. And John, you, you know, I mean, you really were the, um, uh, you know, I mean, everybody at Pro FM back in the day, you know, everybody was kind of a swing guy and then everybody did a little bit of everything uh, uh, at, at those radio stations. Uh, and, and you certainly uh, did your share there. So now I'm going to segue over to the only guy. I mean, it's amazing. <laughs> yeah. Giovanni is absolutely amazing. You know, we, we used to joke around a little bit uh, in the building back oh, in the yeah. day. You know, we would always say like, well, you know, geez, you know, I mean, Salty Brian was, you know, Salty was, you know, you know, was like the the um, unchallenged king of Rhode Island radio. And we would sometimes joke around like, you know, geez, when Salty decides to retire, who's going to be the next Salty Brian? OK, and I got to tell you, uh, I would have never I wouldn't have guessed, but it's Giovanni. Believe the, me, neither would I. <laughs> still doing mornings on Pro FM. And now, Gio, correct me if I'm wrong, but um, Gio and I first met when I was the seven to midnight or the 10 to two. I think I was the 10 to two at night disc jockey because that's when I was following Big Ange. Hey, um, daddy. On, oh, on Pro AM. Sure. And you, I used, you know, I, back in those days, you know, the, the request lines would be running all night long and they'd be ringing and uh, you would be calling every single night. And we used to talk about radio and jingles. And I, I mean, I clearly, uh, you know, I clearly knew who you were. And uh, uh, I, I remember putting you on the speaker box and I would just like leave you there, do my breaks, do my shifts. And I'd come back and you would be there. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, so pick it up from there, uh, how you kind of got into the building. Well, uh, first of all, before I start, I want to thank all of you guys for having me part of this because I'm not the original staff. I know I've been there the longest, but I appreciate it. This is like, I, it's, this is like the, uh, the ultimate for me. I've been a little nervous about it all day, but I'm very excited to be with you guys. So anyway, quick, uh, how did I get it, uh, up and with Gary? You needed somebody to, you guys all know that old Mason Street st studio, or you know how our studios used to be, not exactly the highest technology. So Gary said, I need somebody to queue up the request line calls, <laughs> the, the tape machines in the other room. I'm going to start and stop the tape. And when I stop the tape, you queue up the last call. He showed me how to do it. I'd never touched this stuff before. I'm in Jake's whole production room on Mason Street. I queue up the call and he played on the air, except one time, I went like this, right? And I was like, okay, it looks good. And then I'm like, ah, well, did I get it right? Oh, guess who comes running in two seconds later? I had the pot up on the air. You should have done that on the air. Don't ever do that again. So I got in a little bit of trouble. <laughs> but beyond that, after the guys moved to, to uh, the trail, you didn't need me anymore. So I took a back seat. I wasn't part of the, the group just yet, but I would call Jay Clark every day. You got anything for me? Got anything for me? Got anything for me? Finally. Just like uh, I forgot who said it was Mike. Mike said earlier, you got a call from Jay Clark. I'm at Rolo Manufacturing on Pine Street in Providence, oh. working with my father. I need you to come in. I got a job for you. I'm like, okay. I quit. And I walked out, <laughs> basically. And my first job was to, again, classic WPRO mentality. Let's move to the trail with a whole new setup but we haven't carted up the music yet. They're going to let this clown do it. So they gave me the job to cart up the music. So now I'm going to circle back to Jack for a second because the very first piece of information I got about how to do this was I want it, Geo, I want you to, oh, I wasn't Geo yet then. I want you to make sure when I press the button, it's like a piano key. Boom, it's got to be right there. Like, okay, I, I, I was scared out of my mind. I did it anyway. So I did that. I was finished with that job. And then Jay had, had no nothing for me to do. So I was fired. 
But Burko said, no, you're not. You're coming downstairs with me. So I ended up downstairs at Gary and I became his personal assistant for a number of years and climbed up through the ranks. And you guys know the whole story. Yeah. And somehow through some magic, I ended up uh, doing middays for a while. I did 10 to 2 at night. I, I, I was the first live overnight jock on pro uh, because, I, because I, I used to program Irving. And one time I said to Gary, I said, how about if I just come in and do it live? I don't need to get paid for it. Of course, you can't do that these days. So I came and I taught myself how to do radio by doing that. I know I'm jumping around all over the place. But at some point, as a, when I was production director, I promise I'm getting to the end here quickly. When I was production director, uh, Cap City sold the station to Telemedia. And it was th the whole thing where you now you have to do two jobs. Like, okay, so I'm going to do middays and production director. And at, at that point, at some point down the line, the morning guy was bounced. And I used to fill in for him. And they just called me upstairs and said, it's your turn. We're going to try you out on the mornings. And I've been there. I'm the long, we're the longest running morning show in the history of the radio station. And I have no idea how that happened, but it's <laughs> happened. It, and it, there it, I am. No, it's a, it, it's amazing. And, you know, Gio, I remember, um, you know, uh, you know, there are some things you remember, like it was yesterday. There are other things that you hear the stories and you go, Whoa, I don't remember that. But, and yeah, I mean, it, it's, uh, I mean, look, this radio station uh, has an amazing, amazing legacy. So guys, let's just kind of like open it up now. Cause I, what I would love to hear is, are what's your like number one memory um, uh, uh, from pro FM from your time at, at pro FM. Riding a roller coaster at Rocky Point State Park. Geo was there for this. So, Mike, um, you know, you, you were really involved because you, you, you were the music director and um, uh, doing nights, uh, which was probably back in those days, the most active day part on that radio station. I mean, it was like at night, that station like like just kind of kind of blew up. What was, the, you know, I'm sure there are many, but what was the there number is, one thing I, that I, I don't, there are, there are so many, because we did so many different things. And it, the thing about it is we did so many different things and we just, for all of for most of us, not all, but we were there all the time. I mean, and we weren't making any money. <laughs> I mean, we were being robbed, 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 but we didn't. Here, here, here. Just doing it. <laughs> I remember, you know, and I told you as part of this thing is that Volkswagen thing that we used to have. And I remember going out with John and Gio. Oh, God. Saturdays and none of us could drive a stick. <laughs> That's how we, we learned how to drive it. Stick. We would be struggling making oh. the pills. We're saying, does anybody? We didn't know what we were doing. I'll let you know. thing. <laughs> Guys, the, you know, the two things that really, really um, resonate with me is number one, that they gave us as a group this 50,000 watt radio station. I mean, you know, looking back on it, they kind of handed it over to me. And you guys are all an extension of, of what I, you know, as the program director. So mm -hmm. they gave us this 50,000 watt radio station and the, the dedication and the commitment that everybody had to pro FM, um, even though we were making no money, I, I think we didn't even, I don't know if we knew it or not at the time. I, no. I think we knew it. Oh, I, I knew oh, it. I knew. Uh, I was pretty <laughs> sure some of you guys made it. <laughs> yeah. But I did. That was my first. I said, I'm getting to do what I like. I'm not making any money, but. I loved it. I loved it. Really but when uh, when we first went on the air from that small automated studio, the uh, turntables were the push button QRKs. They didn't have the toggle switch. No. So when you push the button in, half yeah. the, time the damn thing came back out. Right. If you came out of the top of the hour ID and you hit something like Jet by Paul McCartney, we go back on the air again and you know how we I remember you know how we got the remote starts here's how we weren't given anything nobody was taking care of us we haven't mentioned but when boogie came in the afternoon who was also a part-time engineer he's yeah. here doing his afternoon show and wiring up the turntables <laughs> yeah. for remote starts and and you know mike if i he was the one that wired up the remote start. Mm -hmm. And, you know, you know, I just want to take a second to remember um, Bob Cummings, uh, the boogeyman, who uh, was one of our original on air guys. Uh, I, I, I just I just loved him to death. I mean, yeah, when, I heard, when I heard him on WSAR and Fall River kind of going in and out of the uh, uh, the, the uh, boogeyman character, uh, I just said, I've got to have this guy on Pro FM. And uh, unfortunately, Bob passed a few years ago. Uh, he was a wonderful guy and, and he loved Pro FM. Uh, I, I'm in touch with his daughter, uh, Courtney. 
uh, who was a, a, like a little baby at the time. And yeah. so I, I just wanted to uh, uh, not let this call, you know, uh, go with, without talking about Bob Cummings, who made such a tremendous contribution uh, in the early days of Pro FM uh, with his promos and his production uh, and and his just bigger than life yeah. uh, on air persona. I mean, he really uh, he was really something else. And uh, again, when I was going through all the pictures, um which are going to be coming in and out of this video. Uh, you know, he, he even had a big presence in the pictures. So uh, we remember the boogeyman. Now bar your skates. FM is WPRO FM on a beach party weekend, 430 in Providence. With the best music, PRO FM. FM stereo, WPRO FM with the best music, 435. Boogie. People in trouble can help you if you've got a problem. Don't know where to turn for help. Why don't you call them there over at 738 1444? Pepsi Life. WPROFM is my favorite radio station. That phrase pays. Ten phone call to reach me with it. It's going to rip me off for a summer beat pack. Grab your own damn leg and stick it in your ear and call me down, baby. So, guys, here's my big question now. Um, when I listen back to air checks of Pro FM, uh, look, some of them are better than others. You know, we, we, we kind of like grew as time went on. You know, in 74, we sounded OK. In 75, we were better. By 76, we were really, really good. Uh, the, the station really matured. Um, but it was uh, even from the beginning, it was a great radio station. What do you guys think we did back then that would still or it would be a good lesson for today's programmers who are coming up, um, you know, not not to be uh, the group that is saying the good old days were better. But I think we did a lot of great stuff back then. I think we sounded like our city. I think we sounded like New England. I think we, you know, well, one of the funniest things that happened to me was, uh, do you remember when we gave away the car? It was uh, they had to pick out the uh keys out of a key out of 92 keys and if it started the car they got the car well on that particular <laughs> we didn't get much bad promotion out of that because somebody got it on the second day but the one thing that i remember uh, about you guys that uh was that we had a very tight radio station on pro fm i mean that thing that thing really moved it never stopped it it just moved forward but you each found a way to carve your own little niche um you know uh it was big john bina you know big john had a, a persona of himself it was mighty mike working nights uh you know you know you, uh, mike you always had that um kind of cachet is that the right word uh you know and i, I you know you know you know uh, jack bruce uh, you know you you were you know, you each had your own I thing think, that you did, uh, you know, um, brand, basically a brand. Yeah. I think brand. one of the things that, yeah, branding. that stood out about all of us is that one, we all listened to the station and mm -hmm. that was clear. we all knew what everybody else was doing. There was something there. It was like no surprise and nobody had any problem talking about anybody else. And two, we made it very, which everybody in radio talks about because you should do it, but not everybody does it. We were local as local, as local, as local as could be. We were yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. and, we, and not only we weren't just we talk about it, but we would mention them. We were towns. We would go places. We would do things. But we were very, 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 very clear about stenching where we were from and proud of where we were from. Well, let me, you know, uh, we was, got a lot of personality into a short period of time. And, mm -hmm. and when I went to WRK in Boston, uh, one of the things that I remember, Gary, were obviously the lessons we all learned doing this passionately, but getting a lot of content into a short period of time. And I followed Willie B doing six to nine at WRKO and he had 12 seconds. And just like Dan Ingram or anybody else working at that time or all of us on Pro FM, you made the most of that time. You made it local. You made it your own. And that's a skill that, you know, we we had liner cards, but it was very different back then. You know, the majority of what we did was from 
our hearts and our experiences on the air for that period of time. We didn't sound homogenized and pasteurized. I think we had just a great, as Mike said, you know, a, a local radio station that meant something to the market. And, you know, I, you know, to this day, uh, I talk with my air staffs all over the country um, and I, I try to explain that it's not how much you say, it's how you say it. And I, mm-hmm. I think, I think, you know, looking back at it, you guys were all masters of it because I know how tough I was on, you know, not talking too much and keeping the music going and um, uh, reading the liner cards. But you guys all figured out how to make that work and, and still have uh, a magic to it, which uh, is going to take me over to Gio to ask you this question. So, you know, here you are, Gio, uh, 47 years later, you're still on the air doing the morning show in the, in, on the longest running morning show in Providence. Uh, do you ever like 10 seconds before you put the mic on, you ever flash back to talking up, staying alive by the Bee Gees uh, or, or do you ever flash <laughs> like in your own mind, do you ever like flash back to the top hour ID, you know, where you, yeah, yeah. You, you had to jump in between that jingle about fourth times to make it right. Well, I have several answers for you there. And I'm going to start with, by saying this one thing, I don't want to miss saying this. Every one of you guys I'm looking at right now, there's a little piece of you in me. And I, push that out on pro FM every day. And to, to answer your question. So, so, and, and I'm not talking about just you, I'm talking about boogie and all the other guys, you know, that, that have come along the, along the way. And I try to take everything I learned from you guys, from what we did back then and push it out on pro FM. And I try to make, it, it still does a lot of things Chuck said and Mike said, and Jack said, and, and John and yourself, Gary, we still do those kind of things. I'll take a phone call. Where are you from? In North Providence. Oh, are you on the avenue right now? What are you doing? Are you making a left turn into Duncan? Or I, I try to find a thread to link it to Providence. Oh, we from Fall River. We happened to find out recently that everyone loves this place called Patty's Pierogies in Fall River. So every time I get somebody from Fall River on, I go, oh, did you go to Patty's Pierogies this weekend? You know, it's all, le- all things I learned from you. And hey, one Gio, of the- Gio. Yes, sir. Uh, Patty's Pierogies are on the Food Channel. They are they? Like, yeah, I've heard uh, that too. Yeah. So you remember. Okay. So one of wow. the greatest thrills I have, yeah. I don't have to, I don't get to do it all the time, but sometimes we're running a little late near, near nine o'clock and I have to go, excuse me, guys, we're running a little late. I got a legally ID the station, WPROFM Providence, a cumulus station. I get a big kick out of saying that still after all these years. Uh, so uh, yeah, I do think about those things. Uh, maybe, maybe not necessarily thinking about uh, talking up, staying alive, but uh, I definitely think about <laughs> the uh, the old days and what it used to be like. And I and, and sometimes I'll sit there, you know, you know, how you sit there five, ten seconds before the song's going to be over. And it's just you. You know, I know I'm with a group of people, obviously, but it's just it's just me. And I'm just sitting there with headphones on, just waiting, to, you know, hand, finger on the button. And I think to myself, my God, I'm still here. <laughs> I look around if I'm in the room now, I haven't in the room in about a year, but like, I look around going, how is how is this possible? And I'm still here, and I I, I got to do what I got to do. I got to do I got to do what Gary says. I got to do what all these other guys taught me. And stay be pro FM, go, and I just do it. And I You're think humble, I that's that answer your question. Yeah. <laughs> well, You're a humble one of the man. Great memories I have, and uh, you'll all appreciate this. Uh, Gary Berkowitz, an Emerson College graduate, Big John Bina, a graduate of Emerson College, taking Ann and Hope surveys to Annenhope, which no longer there, on Route 6, and walking in, dropping the surveys, Gary walks me over to the stereo section, and he <laughs> is absolutely miffed. Okay, we're adults now. God, no, we got on our hands and knees and started to tune all the radios in there to 92 Pro FM. <laughs> And still do it. Well, you know what? what I the, like about the detail. Till this date, I think we all did that. <laughs> still do it. I remember that. I remember going to Ann and Hope, yeah. and, and or uh, I think it was was it Zare maybe Zare's. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. I would walk in there, and it was it was right after JB one hundred and five had come on the air, and they were the arch enemy to us. Uh, uh, right. it, it was it was a it was a fierce war, and like I would walk in, and sometimes I would I would hear them on, and I would be like, you know, God. You know, and I'd be changing every single radio. And I think as you mentioned up, that is one of the things that is majorly changing mm-hmm. our radio is there's no competition anymore. So if you Nobody eat, if you fighting each other because your competition is the guy you just walked through in the hallway. Uh, I, there's there's no I mean, like you said, we literally in reality hated JB 105. Yeah. And if we mm-hmm. want to really whisper it, 
we hate it pro am <laughs> i mean oh so we had we had a competitor i think now there's a lot of stations where there is no competitor really oh yeah that's absolutely true you know mike i i find that that I'm, I'm, I'm Facebook friends, you know, with all the guys from JB 105. And of course, you know, Mike Waite came and uh, mm -hmm. joined, joined onto my train uh, after pro FM, but I still find myself being a little bit snipey on Facebook with these JB guys, you know? <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah. I, I remember they used to, uh, so let uh, me do this. I want to do on a, the air. I want to do a quick lightning round around, around the uh, zoom screen here. Um, I'd like you to each give one piece of advice to a young jock, who is just starting off in radio because you know what? There's still a lot of kids who are really excited about radio. Uh, and as a matter of fact, I'm doing a Zoom call next week with um, a whole group of under 30s uh, to, to learn what they think and, and to, you know, get their opinion on where things are going. But if you could, if you could give them one piece of advice, the, the young ones coming up today, John Bina, start. When I was coming up, I took every air shift that I could get. And I, I do remember days where I was on WECB and WERS on WASAR uh, in Fall River, then up to New Hampshire to WFEA, and I slept in the soda room, got up and did a shift the next day. Mm -hmm. So, you know, my whole thing was time on the air to get as, you know, in, improve every single shift. And Chuck, Chuck Bennett, one Chuck Bennett, one thing you would, you would uh, advise a young broadcaster. Oh, wow. This is hard. Um, I would say that uh, you want to make sure that you don't come in with an attitude uh, because sometimes uh, younger ones, uh, uh, they may come in and they think, well, I know how to do this. I can do this better than, than what they're doing. But you want to pay attention to uh, who's ever over you, the, o the operations manager, program director, whoever, and do what they say, follow that. And if you do have suggestions along the way, you can talk to them about it, but don't have the ego. All right. Mighty Mike, one piece of advice. I would, I would recommend that you find yourself a mentor, find somebody who you can actually talk to, who's not your boss, who not necessarily doesn't even work in the same building with you. You can be honest with you, who will give you honest advice on what you're doing, what you maybe should or should not do. It's not easy to find, but it's really not that difficult because if there's one thing we all know is we are all willing to share what we know. Mm -hmm. We're all willing to talk to people. Now, I'm not saying everybody, just because somebody's willing to talk to you, they're the right mentor, but we're all willing to share. And I think most people in this building, everybody on this screen would know, we'd help anybody if they asked us because mm -hmm. we love talking about it. We loved what we did. Jack Diamond, one piece of advice. Um, I was honored to be asked by Dan Valley and his American Radio Systems and uh, Chachi from uh, Benstown to be a mentor recently. And uh, I had a Neil Fight personality come in who wanted to do this for a living. And this was right after Cumulus announced they sold our radio station. They sold the PLJ and a few others. So I had this young potential broadcaster there staring me in the face, knowing all this. And I said, have faith and believe in yourself. Be yourself. Find your personality, like they say in stand-up comedy, know your character, stay in character, and get a laugh in the first 30 seconds. If you don't have faith and passion in who you are and what you do, don't change other than to fit the formatics of the radio station. Still be true to yourself. Hey, Giovanni. Learn everything you can about the business. You don't have to be a know-it-all. Uh, just make sure you know everything you can about the business and become indispensable. Okay. This is my secret. Mm -hmm. When I, when I first started there, I knew nothing about production. I got tossed in a production room. I had to learn how to do it all by myself. Now production is the thing I love doing the morning show. Don't get me wrong. But when I get to go sit in my computer and fool around my pro tools and make all I do the, uh, you guys don't may not know this. I do all the branding and imaging for pro FM too. In addition to the morning show, I'm not bragging. I'm just saying that's what I love to do. I want to do that. So and so in the process of learning things about the business, you might, might stumble upon, oh, you know what? I think I like this part of the business better, or I still want to be this way of the business. So learn everything you can and try to make yourself indispensable. John Bina, Giovanni, Chuck Bennett, Mighty Mike Osborne, Jack Diamond. I, I thank you so much for, for doing this call today. Fabulous memories. Uh, just seeing all of your faces on, on the Zoom screen here. Uh, for, is, is pretty amazing for me because um, even though I wasn't sure it was happening at the time, uh, you all m m were a big part of, of making my career possible because you made me look so good uh, at, at Pro FM. And 
you know, uh, I'm, I'm still still going to this day, uh, but it was really all because of you guys. I mean, you were the- Hey, founder. Gary. Yes. Thank you on behalf of all of us and everybody else who came after us. Put your faith in us all as baby DJs for the career we've had since then. So thank you. And you're still going for a reason. You're the I, best I, in the business, baby. I am, but that uh, you know, Pro FM will always be the rock of our radio foundation uh, for 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 all of us. And uh, I thank you all so very much for being here today. Yeah, Gary, thank, thank you. you, thank you, thank you, gentlemen. Ninety-two Pro FM. You know, it was an absolutely perfect spring day 47 years ago, back in 1974. It was a day just like today when we debuted 92 Pro FM. And all these years later, that radio station is still going strong. So my thanks today to Chuck Bennett, Mike Osborne, Jack Diamond, John Bina, and Giovanni. And of course, uh, we do thank Bob Cummings, the boogeyman, for being the foundation that made 92 Pro FM the great radio station that it was and still is today. If you enjoy these programming videos, please feel free to subscribe to my YouTube channel or follow me on Facebook, LinkedIn, Instagram, and Twitter. My AC Programming newsletter, AC Programming Today, is complimentary, and if you're not subscribed yet, please subscribe today at GaryBurke.com. I'll have another programming video coming your way very, very soon, but for now, I'm AC Programming Consultant Gary Berkowitz, and I do thank you for watching.